What's our theme for this meeting? The supply of the Spirit. So we are together. And that Spirit will be supplied to us. Let your amen carry life. I want to begin my introduction tonight with a question. What manner of spirit is this? What manner of spirit is this? We're talking about the supply of the spirit. But what manner of spirit is this? I'm going to be tying it together with the conference name, which is a new wine conference, because there is a close relationship between wine in scripture and the spirit. Be not drunk with wine wearing in excess, but be what? Be filled with the spirit. In Acts chapter 2, 12 to 13, Acts chapter 2, 12 to 13, the Bible told us that, and they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, what meaneth this? Others mocking, saying, this man are full of new wine. In other words, they were saying that what is it that has happened to this man because they have received the supply of a strange spirit. The text that I just read to you is the story of the downpour of the Holy Ghost upon the disciples of God. Everybody was used to how things were until all of a sudden one day some men came in contact with a different kind of spirit that provoked a reaction and the only thing that people could think about when they saw this man is that this one have taken wine. What was happening on that day was the fulfillment of a long time prophecy that a time was coming whereby the spirit of God will not be found in a selected few but will be available to all. And on that day, that manifestation was clear for everyone in that city to see who had come for a festival. Can I say to somebody again, the real things don't happen in the venue of the festival. They happen at a strategic location that many people don't even know that something is taking place. Never trivialize when God calls a selected few together. It is that nothing is happening. It is easy to think that the activities of God are not strong in a place because just outside the venue that God came was 3,000 men. How can you say nothing is happening in a place that had gathered 3,000 and where God had decided to visit was where 120 people had been staying? Everything that is the move of the Spirit in this generation is tied to where it seems as if it is a festival. Never be distracted by the number. I know that God saves by many, but it's a reminder that God also saves by few. On this day was a flow of the Spirit, and everybody said, these ones have taken wine. Before I go into what manner of spirit, I want to try to describe to you what happens when a man becomes intoxicated with this new wine that we are talking about. Wine is not for a thirsty man. Wine was not designed for a man that was thirsty. Wine is designed for a man that desires a different level or has a different level of cravings. When you are really thirsty, it's not wine that you look for. You want water. But when you have had water, and there is just this craving that is coming, you begin to desire wine. If you have walked with God for a while and you know that your thirst has been satisfied to an extent and all of a sudden there is a pool for something deeper, for something more. 
what heaven will administer you is not water it is wine number two wine is for a feast it is what men serve wine is in the similitude of coca-cola that is available at every wedding you know that if you go to a nigerian wedding as long as there's no coke bottle on the table you you didn't attend the wedding you don't even know what you went to you might have just gone for something because the mark that you have come for a feast is that they give you what they give you coke wine is what is served it is why when you remember the story that jesus christ or the bible told us in john chapter 2 from verse 1 to 12 the story of that wedding of cana there was something that they spoke about that finished nobody spoke about food nobody spoke about meat i've attended a few weddings and i realized that many times what finishes first is meat and you have attended the wedding a bit it's always meat but on this wedding it wasn't meat that finished a weird thing finished why and no matter how much they tried to cover it up people began to notice apart from the mc that was in front of the crowd people began to tell that the wine has finished it has a spiritual implication it is wine that is served such that when a man begins to lack freshness of wine people will know no matter how much you hide it many times people pretend that they are still where they used to be <laughs> let me tell you they've not just told you yet they are aware that this is not how we used to be the bible showed us in that story that until jesus was called to the scene and he had to turn water to wine already that wedding was about to be something that will be a mockery something that will be a disappointment and later on everybody will talk about how they attended the wedding and the wine finished don't let your wine finish because there's a supply in god out of our bellies is to flow what rivers of living water there's something that if he does he continues to flow the wine was not designed to be exhausted because you can't even exhaust him himself that is the source of the wine number three wine is designed for a wounded man when you look at the story in luke chapter 15 11 to 32 luke chapter 15 11 to 32 jesus christ gives a story of a man who fell among thieves and he became wounded they stripped him off of his cloth took all of his resources and they left many people who we assumed would have thought about rescuing that man saw him but they had other things in mind that they wanted to do until a samaritan man found him when that samaritan man found him there were two things that he administered he administered a garment for his outside and that's the design of god he has clothed us with glory and with honor that affects the outside but there is something he also administered as a cure and as a source of healing for his wound it was wine so when god sees a man who has been injured how and i will show you as i go on as i tell you what manner of spirit that he is is that how he deals with what has happened to him internally is still this wine don't forget this wine i'm talking about is the spirito how he cures an injured man because there are wounds that garment cannot cover you can cover it well and look as if all is well but internal wounds how he will solve it is with wine number four let me give us one more wine is for a man who wants to dare the impossible everybody knows that if you need to do something that you have never done before you need an energy that is different from the present level of energy that you have now 
It is why those who find themselves in either running or some of these athletic events, they always test them because it has been proven that a man would naturally do something with higher energy if he has taken in a supplement. So we have seen people before who wanted to slap their father and they knew that in their right senses, they can't slap the man. So what do they do? They become drunk. There was a story of that man, very sad story, unfortunately, of what wine, I'm just trying to show you what wine can do when a man wants to dare the impossible. He was the first son of his father when we were still in Ibadan. He had been a stubborn child all of his life and then one of these days he went out, got drunk and when he was coming back home, got to the front of his gate, began to knock the door and call his father by name. Biodu, come out! Come out, open the door for me. And the father was so angry. From the gate said to him, go back to where you are coming from. A sad story. Because he lived, when he came back to his consciousness, he lived on deep. He was depressed practically. We don't even know where he is right now. Kept on shouting, open the door for me. And when his father refused to open, a very high fence. Because of that nature, or that, that condition that he was on, he came and jumped inside. It was with that anger that his father came in, came outside. That how can you be so useless that everybody is already thinking you are a thief in the neighborhood? And as his father rushed to him, his father had a heart attack and died. All he kept on saying in his consciousness is that I've killed my father. Every time a man wants to do something that you will not naturally do, what is given to him is what? Is why? Get him drunk. That's why the Bible was saying that he is not so good. That was saying to kings, give not your strength unto women. He said it's not good for princes to sit down and begin to eat and dine and drink in the morning. Your justice and your judgment system will become perverted because wine makes you do what you will not naturally do. We have seen people stand in front of trailer and because he saw two lights, decided to do like this. They said, why are you bending like that? He said, because what he's seen on that day is too okada. So when he saw the light in the night, it was... <laughs> What I'm trying to say to you is that when a man takes wine, <laughs> what he will not do normally will come upon him. Do you think you can pray for 12 hours? Wait until you drink wine. You think you can't wait upon God and everybody begins to think that your own is too much and you have not drank wine. How do you look at Peter who just weeks ago was ashamed of what the bible called a little girl all what he took was one cup went to three thousand people stood before them and was screaming at the top of his voice i can't shout now imagine what peter was doing to three thousand people the same man that was ashamed because he tasted wine when god begins to administer wine you will find yourself doing things that you never thought you could do. And it is important that I begin this foundation because of where I'm going. Because I need to tell you the kind of wine you are drinking. Because if I keep saying wine, if I keep saying spirit, you will think it is every kind of spirit. But let's begin with the foundation to know what manner of wine what manner of spirit are we talking about so that you will not find yourself intoxicated with the wrong one and still think that you are doing the right thing there was a young man in pursuit of god in this same god that we are pursuing entered into the room put off all the light put on the sound that we are hearing at the moment not this one but another sound light everywhere and in an attempt to ascend, put candles inside the room. And he said he was looking for God. Within three weeks, they brought him out mad. That's waiting on God that they said stay in a place and look for God. That was what he wanted to do. But he came out 
with a degree of insanity because he drank the wrong kind of wine. If you don't know the manner of spirit, you can't contact a spirit that will destroy more than it will build in your life. And that's why God brings us to a place like this so that there is accuracy in definition. And in the next 15 minutes, I want to tell you what manner of spirit this is. This was what Jesus Christ said to his disciples in Luke chapter 9 verse 55. Luke chapter 9 verse 55. Chased Jesus and his disciples out. They had gone to preach and they chased them out. Don't preach here. And John came and said, you know, let's call down fire upon these people just the same way Elijah did. And Jesus Christ said, you don't know the manner of spirit you are of. It means that a man can be very close to Jesus and not even know the manner of spirit. It means that a man can have something and yet not even understand what he has. And very quickly tonight, before we pray, I want to tell you the manner of spirit that God supplies. There are about seven things that the Lord began to open my eyes to about this wine and this spirit. But I'll mention four for tonight. Number one is the spirit of life. Luke chapter 2 verse 7. told us about God's creation of Adam and said that after God had created Adam, he breathed into his nostrils and Adam became a living being. I want to ask you, was there any record of God breathing upon the animals? Are they living things? We, we went to school, Abby. Good secondary schools. Are they living things? Was there any record that God gave this breath unto animals? Eh? Are animals living things? So what is the extra that took place in Adam? After God, the same way God has been saying, let there be light. We learned it earlier. Let the animals come out. Let the fishes be in the sea. What was the difference in life that God had to put inside Adam even after he was a created being? What is that life? Because if you think living is Mr. Niger D, that will be science. There is a life that is different from actually being able to respond to seeing, to sight, and all of that things that this supply of the spirit does to a man that is different from anyone who has not received the life. See what the Bible says. Jesus speaking. He said the thief cometh but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And he's speaking to those who are alive. He said, I have come to do what? Ah, are you Bible son? I've come to do what? Is to give you life. So what other life if I am living? You see, the only difference between a man and a goat is that life that enters into his nostrils by God. And let me also say the only difference between also a believer and unbeliever is this spirit of truth that enters into a man. Otherwise, as long as a man does not have that supply of life, he is a goat. Oh, but when you see a goat, uh, that's it. Any other beautiful thing that he might be achieving, there is no difference between him and a cat. So if you see a man, you are a cat. You are not lying. Because he lacks that life-giving spirit. The manner of spirit that it is, is that he gives life. Every other spirit takes life. No matter what it gives at the initial point, at the end of it all, what is lost is what? Is that life. Anything that it may look as if that spirit is giving, Somebody called me, stays in Edo State. And I didn't know those things were real. 
You know, when you see things online, you really don't know the gravity of it until people that are family members and they can see it real begin to tell you that this thing is not fake. I didn't know blood money is as real as they used to say. But now I believe, at least from the person who told me, that it is no longer young adults, people in their 30s that are doing this thing. It's people that are 14, 15, 17, 18. And that what they do now in Edo State is they don't live for too long. They are promised a lot. So you see a young boy of 18 driving a great car. And then all of a sudden, few months, some are lucky years, they just die. So this one happened to one of their brothers. Just came home with a Benz. Disappeared for about four months. Showed up with cars. And was spraying a lot of money. You will see those videos we think is just fake. <laughs> People are transacting life. That's why when you are interceding, intercede beyond just your environment. We learned that now. Territorial intercession because people are giving up life. So this boy came, distributed wealth, everybody was ailing him. And you know how parents can be forgetting, how are you getting this thing? And then all of a sudden he died. Another video was sent of one who was saying when his friend died, he's also a young person. He should be in his early 20s. He wrote it on social media. Not that he's hiding it. He said it was the burial ceremony of his friend. So he said, oh, my friend, you lived well. They called him one name, Spending. And said, so you have lived well. I would also join you soon. Can you imagine a boy who is barely 25 already saying that he does not mind joining somebody who is dead? It is because every other spirit, what they offer is not life. What they take is actually life. The manner of spirit that he is, is that he is a giving spirit. When you go to James where the Bible was saying that if any man lacks wisdom, let him come to God that giveth. What that word really means is that he is ever giving. Ever giving. He, he does not withhold. You know all those people that they give too much and you are always telling them, ah, ah, keep some for yourself. God does not know how to keep. Ever giving is a life giving spirit. And this consciousness that there is no limitation in your desire. Jesus looked at them and said, eat that too. You have not even asked for anything. Ask until your joy be full. Ever giving. That's the kind of spirit. Anything that says bring before you get. is not his spirit. He is ever giving. The Bible was speaking. And I take the words of Jesus to heart. He said. You being evil. He said. And you need to understand. This is the revelation that I had about being evil it was the story of this man who was kidnapped the man was kidnapped and he was in the kidnappers court and he said as they were beating them and treating them anyhow all of a sudden the head of the kidnappers received a call and it was his wife First time he realized that kidnappers have wife, oh. and he was saying, "I'm very busy with work. I will try and be." The conversation you could hear the conversation of the little girl crying. I want to speak to daddy. So there was an exchange of phone such that the little girl started father <laughs> the said me to bring for you tomorrow when I'm coming and they could hear the sound daddy I want ice cream and a kidnapper everybody says to his daughter don't worry I promise you I will bring you ice cream that's what Jesus, you being evil, 
you know how to do good things to you. A man that will kill comes to all of a sudden is a restriction. There is something that compels him. It's like a compulsion that, ah, uh-uh, my daughter, I will give it to you. He said, you are evil, but he's ever good. There is no part of him that is evil. He said, how would you now think that he will not give you anything that you desire? How can you come to that place in your life whereby you think that he's stopping something from coming to you? He said, the only problem is this. Many of us don't like what we need. And it is what we need that God will give us. And that's where the problem is. So when you pray and then the response comes by your need, you don't like it. So you say God does not answer you. I came to change your orientation today. He's an ever giving God. That's the manner of spirit that he is. A spirit that always gives. Can you open your mouth today and say I receive? Ah, say it loud and clear. What does God have in store for you that he has supplied? What is available for you that you don't even know already? Open your mouth and say again in the name of Jesus. I receive all that has been supplied. Is it not by his stripes that we are healed? Supplied. He became poor that I might be rich. Supplied. Go ahead and pray in the Holy Ghost. I receive. Let your eyes of the Spirit become opened tonight. And everything that is in store, that God has opened and has made available, that you don't even know, open your mouth quickly, with boldness, and say, I receive. Pray with boldness. That's how you receive in this kingdom. With boldness. I receive all that God has made available. He made it available. I receive. Everything that he has made available. I receive. One more minute. Please pray. Pray consciously. Many of you need to see it. And receive what has been supplied. See it and receive it. See it and receive it. See it and receive it. Rabaka sepondo kopia kataya. Oh, thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Let's run. Number two is the spirit of holiness. It's very important. The manner of spirit that this is is the spirit of holiness. Romans chapter 1, verse 4. The devil will do everything and try to imitate God in everything, in power. In wealth, as I just described the stories of those my young people, but there is something that he cannot copy. He cannot copy purity. The devil can be pure. There was a morning song for him. So he walked on coals of fire until iniquity was found in you. The devil can be pure. And that is one thing that God has that no other spirit can possess purity holiness this spirit is holy this spirit is pure i repeat this spirit is holy this spirit is pure any gospel that sponsors a message that accommodates impurity is fake because this spirit is holy this spirit is pure there's a purity that he exudes the prince of this world came unto me and he could not do what he could not find his part in me the prince
use of this word came is more like a scanning system when you are entering a bank you pass through the scan and what he tries to detect is what belongs to him the same way the metal detector tries to detect the metal jesus said i passed through he can't find his part in me what was that that was his part from the beginning he said iniquity was found in him that was what belongs to the devil iniquity was found in him so when jesus was making that testimony he was saying iniquity has no part in me this spirit sponsors holiness. This spirit sponsors purity. Everywhere you go, ensure that you lift up the banners of Jesus in purity. Ensures that you lift up the banners of Jesus in holiness. A generation can still be a pure breed. Samuel came in front of his generation looked upon everybody on the day that he would die not many people have that testimony and he said it loud and clear because his predecessors have been people who everybody knew for perverting justice everybody knew them that every time they came to sacrifice they don't even take portions for themselves they look into it to pick it they, they had disconsecrated the offerings of god the Bible said they had slept with women in the front of the day. They died to sin. It had become regular. But on the deathbed of Samuel, he stood before all of Israel. And he said, whose donkey did I take? Whose sheep did I take that I was not supposed to take? He said, if there is one person, lift up your hands and say, and the whole nation looked at a man, not one. You see, it's not, you see, this thing is more difficult than you are imagining. You know? No matter how great the man of God that is at the back of your mind now, somebody will raise up his hand. Not that he took something, no, but I don't like you. Are, are you agreeing with me? It might not be that the man has done anything, but everybody can like you. When Samuel stood, the purity was too bright. Everybody said he's a perfect man. You know what God said about Samuel? job he said see if he chooses and he says i want to destroy the world he said if i see Samuel, he said the righteousness of Samuel will save him that's not the righteousness of jesus so the righteousness of Samuel has the capacity to preserve him because a man had come to a place of purity I i'm trusting god that god will bring us to a place whereby what we do because you see righteousness there is a righteousness that is the finished works of jesus christ but there's the righteousness that the word of god says he that doeth righteous is righteous there are works of righteousness that was what god meant when he said to abraham i want to destroy sodom and gomorrah but if i find them can god you know pastor was saying a lot of things but i want to ask can God preserve a territory really that we came? Can God's spirit really push out and exude so much of that light that because you are there, that light is bright enough to drive away darkness? A pure breed must rise. The spirit of God must supply purity again to the church because the church looks too much like the world. And so we don't know the difference. How can we change what we look like? Many people are rejecting the man that is a believer that has decided to follow, to come and become president. And it's okay. It's okay to reject him. But it's a problem also. It is because the world does not, can't tell the difference. And they say it. When he was there, what did he do? So they would rather have any other thing because they don't even know the difference between light and darkness. It looks the same. But when there is this spirit at work in the life of a man, there's a purity of life that he brings. There's a difference that he just creates in that man. Nobody might be able to explain why, but everybody can just tell that this man is different. It is the spirit 
of holiness. Number three, it is a refining spirit. I don't want to call it a fire spirit, so let's use a better word. It's a refining spirit. Malachi chapter 3 verse 3, he said, I will sit as a refiner. Jesus Christ speaking. John the Baptist was the one prophesying. He said, I've come to baptize you with water. But there is one coming after me. There is something he will do for you. The same way you are immersed in water. And you know what baptism is. You are immersed in a river of water. Yes, there are modern day baptism in the pool. But the design is that you are immersed in a river. He said, there is one coming after me. He said, how he will baptize you is with the Holy Ghost and what? With fire. So the same way a man is immersed in water and he comes out wet. What should a man who have been immersed in the Holy Ghost and fire, what should he come out with? Proves that he has been refined. So when God was going to bring about the manifestation of this word in Acts, the Bible made sure to emphasize and show us clearly that how the Holy Ghost manifested was that he landed upon the disciples as cloven tongues of fire. And he landed upon their head. There's a Yoruba proverb that says something. And I always feel that there's a correlation between Yorubas and God. Even though there are many stories of creation. But this is what the Yorubas say. They said it is impossible for the house, the roof to be burning and people that are inside the house will be sleeping. He said the moment the roof is burning, all of a sudden, naturally, everybody in the house will do what? Will wake up. The purpose of the fire upon the head of the disciples is so that everyone inside them, including themselves, can no longer sleep. It's a spirit that refines a man. Is a spirit that also sets a man ablaze. A man of God said, he said, just be on fire and people will naturally gather to watch you born. That's what the spirit of God does to a man. One man really can be enough for a territory when that man is truly on fire. This spirit sponsors fire. This spirit sponsors fire in homes sponsors fires in territory all i had was an encounter with the holy ghost in form of fire i took that same fire to my secondary school at the age of 15 and it didn't matter that time because nobody was pursuing anything nobody was ambitious all i took was just go holy ghost to a secondary school and everybody was set on fire including teachers we had services like convention the proprietors had to reduce prayer time because we used to enter into prep time as a result of children who became flaming fire because somebody caught fire at home. It wasn't a message. It was just a flow of fire. You know when you are just burning? When you begin to burn, things will just be coming to that fire. Fire attracts. And that's what the Holy Ghost wants to do. I've always said it and I will say it again here that the design of God is to still win by the advantage of our mobility. Because you are movable, God can achieve more with you. And you need to understand that strategy. You see, the temples are not God's strategy of moving. Men were his strategy. That's why the devil still cannot win. Because everything that the devil wants to do, is still doing in temples. Everybody still needs to go to a certain place. Everybody still needs to go to a shrine to bow down. But God is wise. He's not going to wait in a particular place to sit as now this is an altar that men must come to bow. You have become a mobile altar. If you are on fire, all he needs to do is take you to Iraq. As you are there, begin to burn. It's the wisdom of God to make us mobile altars so that even in the place where they say no church must be here, the mistake is that they allowed you enter. So if they can't stop you, <laughs> they cannot stop him. 
As pastor explained, because you are even his body, he entered when you entered. He's a refining spirit. So he burns. Not just to make you flammable to burn things externally. He also burns you. He purifies you. Like gold, you are refined. You are refined to begin to look like him. The way he wants you to be. You really don't know what things can change to until they begin to pass through fire. Many of us don't know what we can become until the process of his fire becomes complete in our life. Demons can't stay in fire. Spirits have no place when a man is burning. His fire can burn within you. God can use us when we are burning. You, you don't need to say much when you are burning. That's what they said about Jesus. This our heart not burn within us as he spake unto us. They knew that they had been walking with men. A man entered into their midst. They didn't know where he had come. But they, they didn't want to just shout it. But every time they were listening to him, something was taking place in their heart as he spoke. Did our hearts not burn as he spoke? This spirit is a refining spirit. A purifying spirit. Let me also prepare your heart. That in burning... There is no man born that is not left with scars. Because you see, there might be things that have been there for too long that is now sticking. You see, when you read that Malachi chapter 3, he introduced the Spirit of God as both the refining fire and a fuller soap. Or rather, a fuller sponge. If you don't know what these things mean, just think about it. A sponge, when you are washing a plate that has stayed for too long and then all of a sudden the food has dried on the plate you know that spirit of laziness entered you left it one day you left it two days until it became two months and then somebody says i'm paying you a visit and you decide to wash the plate how do you scrub it you get vim you put it on it and then you get sponge and then you do what do you scrub anyhow you make sure that that part that something has refused to go you scrape it now here is the problem that's why you don't allow things to stay too long go because when you are scrubbing there is one danger the danger that a part of that thing can be lost to this you wanted to make it clean but because something else has stayed on it you will lose a portion of skin on that plate that's the danger but the fire is good anyway but i'm just helping you to understand why sometimes men live with scars when the spirit of god comes upon them as fire it is to their utmost good but it does not end without a bruising let's move on our time is fast spent. let me stop i said i'll give us four so let me stop at the last one Finally, for tonight, so that we can pray. He is a comforting spirit. And that was what I was referring to when I was talking about the wine to a wounded man. He is a what? He is a comforting spirit. John chapter 14, verse 26. He is a comforting spirit. Who needs comforting? Because you see, this comforter is not revealed except a man needs comforting. Who needs comforting? A man who is mourning. A man who is crying. A man who is traveling. When a man has begun to travel, whereby God has been able to place a burden upon his heart that has drawn him to a place of mourning, a place of travail. This spirit, how he reveals himself, is as a comforter. Israel, many things, before I talk about Israel, many things will not be revealed to us or through us until we come to travails. 
And it is not travails that is born out of a church meeting or program. Travail even in the secret place. As soon as Zion travailed, he brought forth his children. Many things will not be born even to the church until we learn accuracy in pure travails. Israel will continue to suffer under the hand of Pharaoh until they began to cry. And it is not just a cry and a desire to see something work. It is that now they feel the pain. Let me say it to us. As many of us are praying for Nigeria, many of us don't feel the pain. I hope you are aware. Oh, okay. I still thought about this on Wednesday. I saw it. He didn't shake them. People don't feel the pain. <laughs> Wait until they kidnap your brother. That's, you see, when the Bible began to tell us about the cry of the children of Israel, you need to understand what he meant by cry. It wasn't that they were frustrated with Egypt. Because you will know that they were not frustrated though. When they left, what were they talking about? Take us back. Oh. It's not this hard. It means that the journey to the promised land was tougher than what you thought was persecution. Oh, you, you are not getting it. That moment they began to walk and they were not getting to where they were going. They would rather stay. They said, see, there are cucumbers in this. They are beating also, but there's cucumber. There is watermelon. This one that the only thing I are eating is bread. Take me back to where I will take watermelon. It's not this hard. But you see, the people that cried, let me show you who they were. The Bible spoke about them silently. They were mothers. What was the instruction of Pharaoh? He said, for every male child, take them and throw them into the sea. Imagine a woman who has been waiting upon God and the answer to her cry was a son. And on the name of, day of the naming ceremony that there was a feast after eight days, all of a sudden the armies of Pharaoh entered into the camp and snatched the child off of her breast as she was giving the child. Just snatched it and was tossing because they won't hold the child with regard. Imagine the tears that was coming as she knew that this is the last day she will ever see this child. And the child was not just slaughtered and killed like the days of Jesus. The Bible still spoke about the days of Jesus and the tears of the women. Where were their fathers? Hmm. Motherhood is not posture. Or rather, motherhood is not a title. And it is not gender. It is posture. It's the ability to conceive. And then to be able to preserve the child until the day of maturity. And to be able to push until you back the child. That's a mother. Oh. A mother is not a woman. It's someone who has been impregnated with body. Those women saw their children being tossed into the sea. And they knew that the only things in the sea is either the child will die drowning. Is either a reptile will feast on that child. Or a crocodile or a shark. That child will die in pain. And every time a woman's child is taken from her, the next thing she screams is, God, when? There were not people who were, there were people who could feel the pain. You see, answers and the comfort does not come until you feel a pain. That's when the revelation of the comforter comes to a generation. We will not see the expression of God as the comforter because how we comfort men is with souls. Souls will be one in their number in the day God begins to comfort his church. But we have not learned how to travel. People see their brothers going into sin. There's absolutely no travel until you cry and it's real. You have not traveled. We talk about problems, we don't feel the pain. When last did men kneel and cry? You see, when the man was crying, give me Scotland or I die, that's a travail. When a man knelt until the skin of, 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 of his knee began to join with the ground, that's when he will be comforted with the city. We are not traveling, don't look for the comfort. The comforter is for
for men who know how to wait and cry. That's when he begins to comfort. Sometimes how he comforts is a release of power. Sometimes how he comforts is the release of the supernatural. Remember the church, they had killed James and they began to cry. How he comforted was an angel of the Lord had to come. God had to send an angel of deliverance. God still wrought wonders, but we don't need the ministry of the spirit in terms of comfort until accuracy of travail returns to his church. The church must learn anguish again. We must see children going wayward. And Sunday school teachers must return to kneeling down and begin to mention people by name and say, no, you must know Jesus. We must see people in sin and we are burdened that is this how this guy will end in hell. And you wait upon God and cry until there's a restoration. We have brothers, siblings, sisters, and we have the supply of the spirit and God is waiting to comfort us, but there is absolutely no travail in his church. Anguish must return. Many times Jesus Christ wept. It is to help you know that there is a ministry of the Spirit. And the manner to which he expresses himself sometimes is as a comforter. The moment you understand travel, he comforts. And when God began to hear their cry, that's what he said concerning Israel. He said their cry has come to me. Already he had begun the strategy. But when he had got into a peak, the Bible said, he said to Moses, now you will go, but now I have come down. We will see a great manifestation of the Spirit of God in places that you don't even know about when travel begins to reach heaven. There was a young boy then in UI. That was the only prayer he used to pray. I say his story because he failed twice and all he was saying is God save you I he prayed that prayer until one day somebody began to have sleepless nights the revival that broke out in UI was the product of a young boy who was pacing every night Jesus how can students be wasting like this in parties save you I I say it again to somebody motherhood is not gender motherhood is a posture is a posture of pregnancy is a posture of travail whereby you push hmm, until you bring forth a male child god again is looking for mothers the bible was speaking to us about deborah he said forty thousand men without sword until i deborah arose a mother in israel will you pray tonight and travail I don't know that which God will put upon your heart. Maybe it's life. Maybe it's the refining fire. I didn't talk about the spirit of truth that teaches men where to go. I don't know which one the Holy Spirit will put upon your heart. But my time is up tonight. I will give you two minutes. And that two minutes your assignment is to lift a cry. A cry to God that there can, they can there be rain. A reign of your spirit and I am open to receive all of it. And as you pray, I want you to peep around you. There might be somebody in need of a deliverance. There might be somebody that is not yet saved. It, it could be you. But can you receive burden for yourself today? And you say, God, concerning my sister, can you save his soul? It could be Nigeria that all of a sudden there will be a burden in your heart. I want you to pray. It could be for those people that were kidnapped that are still in the kidnappers then. I saw it in the papers today as those who are connected to them were weeping. But all that I want you to do is to maximize this session. To ask for a supply of the comforter. That he will visit you. He will visit you. And there will be a supply of comfort. If you can find a neighbor, please find him or her today to help you. And agree with somebody as we begin to press it's just 10 minutes but can we join the angels of god to war today lift up a cry like a mother travel travel find the neighbor hold him on and begin to travel oh you can pray better than this please pray please pray please pray oh you can pray louder you can pray louder you can pray louder you can pray louder. You can pray louder. He 
spirit is a life giving spirit ask for life ask for life in your inner man I have come that you might have life let there be a supply of life let there be a supply of life open your mouth and pray open your mouth and pray in this new white conference a spirit is a spirit of purity is a spirit of holiness can you press can you press can you press for holiness without holiness no man shall see the lord press for purity let the bodies of purity return to his church let the bodies for holiness return to his church his spirit is a refining spirit can we ask for the fires of the spirit the fires of the holy ghost to burn to burn to burn in our spirit to burn in our soul to burn in our bodies the fire must burn the fire must burn we will burn for him our altars will not lack fire oh pahikata sapoka here can we pray for the comforter can we pray for the comforter that he puts in us burdens bodies for our territory bodies for our territory bodies for our territory bodies for our city bodies for our family bodies pure bodies pure bodies pure bodies the bodies in nehemiah how can i smile when my people are in ruins how can i smile when the walls are broken bodies 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 that came unto joseph i must seek the welfare of my brethren bodies that came unto david i must seek the welfare of my brethren how can the man mock god and i'm a silent i receive burdens i receive burdens because where there is body there is comfort where there is body the comfort that shows up i receive burdens open your mouth and pray for one more minute i receive burdens i receive burdens save your church save your church save nigeria save nigeria save nigeria jesus this bloodshed has to stop this confusion has to stop if you don't help us where would we go where would we go where would we go jesus where would we go comfort us with souls comfort us with souls in their millions comfort us jesus you said you will comfort those that mourn we mourn today this is not how the church was where's the powers of old jesus we ask we ask for you we ask for you use me to comfort the generation use me to comfort the generation send me as a gift send me as a gift to my territory send me as a gift to my people my people look and they think the future is bleak my people look and they think no one will arise in my generation i'm available use me